Welcome back everyone, live CUBE coverage here in San Francisco for Google Next 2023, this is theCUBE's coverage. Two and a half days, wall-to-wall -wall team coverage. I'm John Furrier, your host, with Rob Strecce, we got Dustin Kirkland, Lisa Martin, Rob Hope, Mark Alvis, the whole team on the ground here getting all the stories. The story here is about innovation, Ian Massingham, CMO of Avon, Ivan, and Deep Dups, Weijia Wardhana, CTO of Supermetrics, partner of Ivan. Guys, thanks for coming on. Thank you, thanks for having us back, John. AI you. in your name is very valuable now, you know that, right? Yeah, I know. AI Ivan. <laughs> <laughs> so, that That's wasn't the, by design either. No, shirt. it wasn't by design. You know, Ivan was founded back in 2016, so you could say that we predate the, uh, the AI wave or the AI hype, depending <laughs> on how you want to look at it. And uh, our founders, as you know, were working at F-Secure on uh, malware ingestion, large-scale data pipelines and processing. They stumbled on the idea that what they were doing there was somewhat, somewhat yeah. replicable and relevant to other organizations, and they created Ivan to try and make it yeah. simple for organizations to use open source data infrastructure tech. Yeah. So. I mean, you're teed up for, for whatever AI coming to the data aspect of it. Of course, yeah, I mean, model building, inference, uh, it's very, very tightly linked to the data ecosystem, and that's precisely where Ivan operates. And we have many, many customers today that are using Ivan to drive AI workloads that are very, very close to what Ivan does. Do you leave, they call you Dups too as well, yep. as your nickname? Yeah, absolutely. Right. And right. yeah, like I told you, only my mother calls me my <laughs> real name, so. <laughs> well, you guys are a customer together up here. Talk about Supermetric, what you guys do. Very fascinating product. Uh, and you're on Google Cloud, big bet with Google. Yeah, yeah. So Supermetrics, what we help uh, companies do is consolidate their data into where they need to do an analysis. And specifically, we focus on marketing data. So uh, Facebook ads, Google ads, LinkedIn, you bring it all into BigQuery, uh, Google Sheets, Look Looka Studio, we're like some of the most popular there. And, uh, and yes, we're a big customer of, of, of either. And, and has been instrumental in, in our transformation from being a single cloud uh, application to a multi-homed, multi-cloud, wherever the person wants their data processed, uh, and yeah. Ian, you also saw before we came on camera that you're also a customer of theirs. Yeah, we're a Supermetrics customer, so we use Supermetrics to ingest our own performance marketing data, figure out which of our digital ad campaigns are working, uh, and actually in the future we're going to be using uh, machine learning models to try and optimize our ad spend as well, using this same, this same data set that Supermetrics helps us collect and aggregate. So, so quite a compliment that these guys are working with you guys, because they love data, you guys are into data, I mean, this is a good, good match. That's actually how we heard about Ivan, was that, who is this customer, Ivan? And then we were looking for a database provider, and we're like, ah, oh, let's actually <laughs> check them out. Yeah, yeah awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, so you play in the CDP market, is that, is the, that would you say your like, customer data platform, visualization, or are you really, you're providing out you said you connect into Looker. Is it more a semantic layer? Is no, we actually uh, grab data. So we, so you, you can, uh, let's say Looker Studio, for example. You yeah. can use one of our connectors to uh, go into Facebook Ads, get the data, do the visualizations there, um, and yeah, we process that data for you. I mean, this yeah, is the uh, the, uh, the weird thing for people that might not be super familiar with digital ad technology is, believe it or not, there are very few standards. Yeah. All of the different providers provide the data in a Absolutely. different format and provide different functionality. So the choice for a customer like us is, do you want to do that yourself and maintain all of those different connectors to Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, yeah. Google Ads, or do you want to put a simple sol solution like Supermetrics in the middle to make that a standardized process so that you don't have to worry about maintaining all of this different custom connector infrastructure? Actually, there's one use case that's happening right now that is dear and near to a lot of marketers is that Google, as you know, retires certain things and builds new things. <laughs> one of them is Universal Analytics, which right. is going away, and GA4, GA4. is yep. there. Uh, um, but they are not one-to-one. -one. The trans, yeah. Yep, so you yeah. can use Supermetrics, for example, because we have already done the hard work of trying to translate that. So if you've already got your reporting for Universal Analytics, you can use Supermetrics. Hey, Bob's your uncle. And, well, and well, sorry, yeah. how, how's, how does Ivan help you? You mentioned the multi-cloud or almost super cloud, as we would call it, but how do you be cross-cloud for that? And knowing that you're still, you know, big Google, but how has that helped you? So, Ivan's been instrumental for us to be able to move into GCP. We were a single cloud, and our central databases were running in that single cloud. What we needed to have was a like-for-like -like database that we could move in an instant, like within a second could be moved from one cloud to another cloud. And this is the infrastructure that Ivan provides us. 
very simple to use, automatically set up configurations with power usage for the databases, uh, ready to go. It's, it's remarkable. We literally can move a database now from AWS to, uh, to Google in three seconds. Wow. Nobody even notices, and it's incredible. Well, we've been talking about our super cloud discussion on theCUBE and also in studio around this notion of this data layer between multiple clouds, and this is the number one thing people are talking about is, I want to have data span clouds, because the apps are going to be on different clouds, why can't I share the data? This comes down to be a really hard problem, Ian, you guys are tackling this. Take us through the secret sauce, and, and, and what makes it all work? Well, we offer 11 different open source data infrastructure products as cloud managed services, so we have what we would consider to be the essential toolkit for developers that are building data-centric applications and want to benefit from the innovation, speed, and security benefits that come with open source. We have a control plane that we've built. Uh, we have an adapter layer that allows us to communicate with the different cloud providers' APIs. And then we provide a mechanism for customers to both deploy, control, and scale instances of this open source data infrastructure technology, either in a single hyperscaler across multiple or to do some of the advanced things that Dubs is talking about, like moving databases between yeah. providers or establishing data streaming infrastructure that spans multiple different hyperscalers. And yeah, you're right, the flexibility and power of migration is one big benefit here, but the other big area that customers get a lot of benefit from is the introduction of a simple abstraction layer that means that they only have to tool their developers once, regardless of which provider they're building their apps on, their experience in accessing this data infrastructure technology is consistent and familiar, and they can reuse those yeah. skills across the different providers. And we found many, many ISVs who clearly have a need to be in all of the different hyperscalers get a huge amount of value out of that consistency and simplification benefit you, that we you offer. Know, I, I smile, and, and internally I'm kind of cheering, because this is something we've been talking on theCUBE for almost eight years, maybe 10 years, around how the role of data, but before that, DevOps was dominating infrastructure as code, and then security shift left. So everything's kind of going to the developer. It feels like we're at a time now, and all the AI discussions kind of point to this, is that the developer pipeline and managing data is like, not IT, it's DevOps. And so it's DevOps, all yeah. this DevOps-like feeling to it, where when I say DevOps, I mean like, things are built for the developer to perform better. Yeah. with the data. Yeah. yeah, and there's a huge amount happening in the ecosystem. I mean, Ivan's a great example of a company that's building tooling to simplify this, but if you look adjacent to us, you can find huge, huge advances have been made in things like data documentation, providing tooling that enables data engineers and developers to self-serve, build applications in a way which is simpler and more robust, and actually solve some problems that I think five or 10 years ago would have been really, really difficult yeah. to sort of get your hands around and, and solve for. What, t t t talk us through the, uh, the use case of a customer that needs your solution. What's going through their mind? Do they have a pain? Is it like a frustration? Is it the developer? Who's engaging with you out of the gate? What's the core So there's, a, I mean, there's many different pathways, I would say, for customers to discover Ivan, Ivan and users, but I think there are three primary drivers that result in, in, in developers and organizations using our platform. The first is a very simple one, which is, I want to use this open source technology because I feel like it's highly valuable, but I don't want to engage in the heavy lifting that's required to deploy and operate it. You know, it's complicated, and actually it distracts from building your core exactly. product, right? From the things that are really unique and differentiated about your organization. So there's, you know, to steal an Andy Jassy phrase, it's like offload that undifferentiated heavy lifting to yeah. an expert provider. That's one big driver. The second is this idea of standardization where you get the same tooling, the same developer experience, regardless of which underlying platform you're using. And that fundamentally is about cost and risk reduction, right? I don't have to train teams yeah. in five different platforms, yeah. and once I've learned to do something well, I can repeat it across different providers with predictability, helps with security, helps with compliance. Uh, but the third is relatively new for us, and that is something called bring your own cloud. And this is a deployment construct that allows customers to put Ivan services inside their own hyperscaler account. So you can run Ivan inside your own GCP account, inside your own Google Cloud account. You can run it inside your other hyperscaler accounts. You can exploit your discounting frameworks, the committed cost structures that you have with the providers. And this is where Ivan can play a big role in cost reduction for organizations, just raw cost reduction. Yeah. Like, I want to drive down my aggregate cloud spend in the, in the face of 
challenging economic conditions or other investment priorities. So basically you're checking the productivity box with developers. The ease of use gives you efficiency access on cost yep. savings relative to operations. Yep. Yeah, and I can, I can say that, that all, of it, all of that is true. When we looked at what our customers wanted to do was to process their data, let's say, in the United States. In the United States, in GCP, very specifically, that's where they want their data sovereignty to be. Yeah. That requires a database to be there, and that database needs to perform at exactly the same level as the database in GCP yeah. Europe, as well as in Cloud X. Like, like, you just have to get that. You yeah, need yeah. that consistency as a developer. It's not just compliance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's definitely needed. Uh, is there cases where people are just so not yet ready for this, or is it more advanced environments have have as a multi -cloud? I think you have to look pretty hard around the world today to find an organization that's not using some of the open source technology yeah. that we support. I mean, there are a few companies out there that are essentially proprietary software shops, uh, but they're pretty few and far between in my opinion. So I think we've got really high applicability of the solution. And of course, to use Ivan, you have to be using a hyperscaler, you know, because our yeah. platform is only deployed inside the three major clouds and a number of smaller cloud providers as well. So as long as you fit those criteria, and I'd say most organizations that want to move forward yeah. and you know survive probably fit them. Yeah. Uh, I, would <laughs> say that, I would say that pretty much every customer, every organization yeah. has a use case for Ivan. Yeah, it would seem like, uh, to your point about the bring your own cloud and riding the cost curves and being able to you know, have your, your EDPs and all of those different pricing structures that they have out there makes a lot of sense. It, does that complicate the manageability access to it or how, how you actually no, run the service for them? No, not at all, not at all. So we use the same control plane uh, and then in our adapter layer that I described to you that allows us to talk to different cloud providers, instead of talking to our service account where our resources would live under the kind of default configuration option, we're talking with a set of credentials that are provided to us by a customer, and they obviously scope those credentials accordingly uh, with the right set of permissions that we need in order to control and deploy resources within the specific network segments that the customer determines. So it's a very high control environment for a customer, and actually they have the keys. You know, They give us the keys to operate. If they decide they don't want us to do anything anymore, they can remove those keys. It's quite simple for them to do that. You guys are both growing really fast. Companies, congratulations. You guys just rebooted your startup program. Yeah. Um, 2.0? Yeah, we announced Cluster 2.0 on Monday this week. This is our own program to support early stage organizations with access to Ivan's, Ivan's services. We're offering uh, between 12 and $100,000 of credits to startups at Series A or Series B stages. Uh, and we have some really, really fun organizations in the cohort, including, surprisingly enough, an awful lot of companies that are doing Gen AI. <laughs> <laughs> Great, now, talk about the, your guys' uh, success with the ecosystem partners, obviously, connecting things together, you're used to that, you're connecting up environments with APIs, with supermetrics, your growth in the ecosystem, open source based. How has your journeys uh, been? Take us through some of the highlights. Well, five years ago, we were 10 people uh, in Helsinki, Finland. Um, and now we're 400 globally. <laughs> so that's, that, that's an exponential growth in, its, in and of itself, yeah. uh, along with the customers that we've grown. And we've seen, we now process, uh, what, 200 billion um, ro result rows of data uh, coming out of our system. It's insane. Yeah. And this is all being fed into databases that have to be, now be, used. You know, before it was, Boring yeah. ML. Yes. Now it is exciting Gen AI. <laughs> Tomorrow which is, it will which be. Which is really ML will be purpose to be generative. <laughs> well, <laughs> to yes. generate more AI. Well, as long That's as we don't awesome. go to degenerative AI, we're good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, there's some out there. There's some degenerate <laughs> AI out there. I mean, the hallucinations with the side. You know, it's a double-edged sword. AI yeah, is. You know, there's, there's two sides of that coin. You know, there's, yeah. there's a spectrum. So all exciting. And I would assume that uh, also the five countries uh, that have outlawed GA basically in uh, in Europe is help. Is that helped your business as well? I know you do integrations with Google Analytics, and but I'm. I'm sure you can also augment that as yeah. well for those. We have 150 connectors, yeah. uh, and uh, we even have a program where you can actually build, or you can work with us to build your own connector to your own data. Yeah. So it's it's quite, yeah. for us, we're there. For and, you. and also, you, Ivan has a lot of third-party integrations as well, it, it looks like. So for data teams that are really 
looking, maybe they have a Databricks or a Snowflake and yeah, yeah. I mean that's that that's yeah. one of the you know one of the most uh, elegant aspects of the open source ecosystem upon which we depend. Right, you have a really really broad cohort of developers that are contributing to that ecosystem. Uh, we ourselves have an open source program office and focus extensively on contributing open source code, open source solutions that help our customers solve problems. Just this week we announced a connector that allows you connect to connect Apache Flink for stream processing stateful applications to Google BigQuery and our entry into the Google, Google BigQuery partner program uh, comes as a result of that innovation. Uh, but yeah, there are many, many integrations between Ivan and other services, Datadog, AWS and GCP native services, as well as third party services, and of course the broader open source ecosystem as well. And, you know, data is, it has to come from somewhere, right? And it has to go somewhere. And that ability to connect and interchange data with different systems is obviously really, really important for our customers. And you guys got an award from Google, I hear? We did, we were recognized this week as their, break, their breakthrough partner of the year for the EMEA region. And it's in no small part due to the work that we've been doing with customers like Supermetrics, Ovo Energy in the UK, Adeo. These are really large uh, joint Google and Ivan customers that we've collaborated on to bring really, really significant success to those orgs. So we're obviously delighted to get that, but it's more about what we've managed to help customers achieve in the EMEA region yeah. than it is about Ivan own success, I, th I think, anyway. Well, congratulations to both of you guys. Great success. Love to see the growing business, you know, with the scale of cloud, and congratulations on the, on the uh, growth uh, in, in both of you guys. Final words, closing thoughts on the partnership, Google Cloud, what's in front of you in the industry? What's your, what's your closing thoughts for this discussion? Uh, you know what, we're big supporters of open source and Google Cloud, and I genuinely feel like I get the transparency, and I'm so happy to see the progress. And no matter what I just said about AI, I know it's going to be big for us. And we <laughs> definitely are there to, to give the data. And we're, we're there with it. I, I don't know. I, I, Ivan, we use, well, I don't know, six or seven different types of databases from Ivan. So yeah. for us, you've been absolutely wonderful for us to, to, to grow on. So Great. thank you. Thank you, thank you. And you should check out uh, Supermetrics at supermetrics.com. And you should check out Ivan at ivan.com. Okay. <laughs> check out siliconangle.com. That's where all the action is. It's theCUBE bringing you all the data. Super analytics. Super metrics, super cloud is here, super applications, super chips. I even heard Jensen say super chips at one yeah. of his uh, conferences. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys, for coming on. Appreciate it. Thank you it. very much. Google Cloud coverage, day two of day th three days of coverage. I'm Jeff with Rob Stretch, for Lisa Martin and Dustin Kirkland. We'll be back with more live coverage after this short break.